right, guys, welcome back. I um, just want to go over rebuilding an alternator, a 3G alternator. Um, we all use them. Well, most of us use them on our Fox Body Mustangs as uh, upgrades from the factory. I think it's like a 70 amp alternator. They came stock, just can't support hardly any power. So um, the 3G alternator that I have on Gunner, the hatchback, has been making some noises. It's been squealing. Typically, from what I'm hearing, it's from the front bearing. So I'm just going to go ahead and rebuild it, um, and I'm going to show you the steps and procedures on how to rebuild an alternator. So let's get started. What I've already done is uh, run the nut loose for the pulley. We'll take this off. Pulley slides off. This is actually a factory Ford Motorcraft pulley from a 95 Mustang GT. And I've had problems with this alternator just recently. Uh, the bearings have been squealing. So I want to go ahead and rebuild it. Um, of course, it's not squeaking now, but the, you know, that's how that goes. But uh, took the pulley off. We'll flip this over. And if you'll notice, we have the voltage regulator and also the output post. Um, so what we're going to do is remove the regulator. And the only four screws you're going to remove are in the outer corners. Uh, they're going to take a T20 Torx bit. Now that all four screws are loose, we'll just pry up and pull out. And what you'll see here is actually the two commutator brushes. Um, this alternator looks very good, electronically speaking. Um, see if the camera will pick this up but if you guys can tell in the light there are two copper slip rings in here one is going to be a positive 12 volt the other one is going to be a ground okay and it's actually going to feed from the voltage regulator one's positive one's ground and what happens is the voltage and ground uh go through the slip ring and it energizes the rotor there's a field winding on the rotor itself so it creates a permanent magnetic field. And as that rotor turns through the windings of the stator inside, it generates a three phase AC current cycle, just like what you would see uh, in electric utilities. Um, we'll go more in depth, but this looks really, really good inside here. Oh, that's almost brand new. I think the bearings just went, but uh, we're gonna continue taking this apart. Next, what you're going to want to do is remove these three bolts, it's eight millimeter heads. Once these bolts are out, we'll go ahead and pry this back end bell off. Guys, when I take electric motors apart, alternators and so on and so forth, anytime you have something like this, what I like to do personally is I like to take a center punch, like a cold chisel center punch, and just put an indentation lining up all three parts so that way I know exactly uh, how the three parts are clocked so you'll have the back end bell the forward end bell and then this is kind of like a case that'll house the rectifier inside so i'm just going to take my punch and mark the back the center and the front all right guys and as you can see hopefully you can in the light but you can see my center punch marks there is one in the center but uh Hard to see. But anyways, it's lined up, so now we're clear to take this thing apart. And now I'll go ahead and remove the screws. And at this point, guys, you can take like a rubber dead blow and just kind of tap on these ears going backwards. And this should start to pull out of the front case. And just keep working it. 
and it'll come apart. All right, guys, it's apart. Um, this unit stays together. This is your iron core stator. Oop, let me get it back in the light. This is your iron core stator, coil windings. One thing that's very important when you guys are taking this apart is to make sure that these copper windings do not get nicked or scratched. They are covered in a in a coating that, that actually insulates the copper. So any kind of exposure is not good for it. It can short out. Um, this is definitely wound as a three-phase Y circuit. I can tell by the coils with the one and four groupings. I can also tell, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but where the windings all leave to the main hot leads, there's four wires, four groupings. So you're going to have an A phase, B phase, C phase, and a neutral common point. And what's going to happen is all of that goes into the rectifier, which is in here, or it's actually, oops, I need to get focused back in the light. It's actually in here. But all this is going to stay together. There's no need to take this off from the stator, the back end bell from the stator. We're just going to keep all this together. Um, so at this point, we're just going to kind of clean everything up with electrical parts cleaner. Um, again, this is the stator and the back end bell. And then here is the rotor. <laughs> See if I can get this in the light. But you can tell all of this is coated in epoxy. All of the copper windings are coated in epoxy and like a varnish. And just to get a little more technical, here's the slip ring that I was mentioning. So you have two copper contacts where the brushes ride. One's positive, one's negative. And if you notice, there's a copper arm that feeds one end of the winding that's on this rotor, the other lead feeds the opposite lead on the rotor. And what it's feeding is this copper winding inside here. I don't know if it can, the camera will pick this up, but this is just a copper winding soaked in varnish just like these windings and they're wrapped around the core. So when you send 12 volts across and you can mix these up, you can mix up the the 12 volts here and the ground here or the ground here and the 12 volts here. But of course, that's that's all theoretical terms, but your voltage regulator, each brush, one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, and they're dedicated. But anyway, you're still going to have a permanent magnet in this rotor. And as this rotor is magnetized and spins through the stator, the magnetic field is going to push so to speak, on these windings and induce a current into the windings, which will leave out through those leads out to the rectifier, which will convert the AC to DC and then out through the positive post and charging your battery and electrical system. This slip ring right here looks very good. I'm not going to do anything with it. It's not really worn at all. Um, I've seen them pretty bad. Um, we're going to keep this. Mainly what we want to do is replace the bearings. Um, the bearings are what was squealing. So that's what we're going to take care of. And uh, they shouldn't be too hard to pull off. The next thing we have is the bearing in the front case or M bell. So we call it in motor shops. Um, this is the one that was squealing. Uh, how these are held in is there's a backing plate with three screws. Once again, eight millimeter. Um, be very careful if the alternator that you're working on hasn't been rebuilt, if it's strictly factory original and it's been out there forever, they're probably going to be seized in here. Now, this alternator has been rebuilt. Um, I bought it as a reman unit, but, uh, you know, it's been probably 10, 12 years, but there's not very many miles on this alternator, guys. There's probably only maybe like 30,000 miles in the, in the probably 13 years that Gunner has been running. So, um, but you know, that's what age does, I guess, but, and, and inferior bearings. So three bolts, we'll take this plate off. And once again, I'm going to use my cold chisel and just clock this ring. I don't believe it matters. It looks pretty symmetrical all the way around, but I'm going to go ahead and knock a punch in the case and one on the plate to make sure it goes back the same way. 
I don't know if you can see in the light, but I have a punch here and a punch in the case just above it. Now let's go ahead and remove these three screws and let's remove this bearing. Well, good news. It looks like the bolts are not going to break. They were snug, but uh, they are being removed, so no problem there. Again, if a, you know if your alternator is absolutely original and you know been in a very harsh environment, be very careful with these screws. If it feels like it's going to break, just stop and get you a propane torch and just kind of throw some heat at the outside of the case around where the bolt enters, and that'll swell the outside aluminum and allow the bolt to break loose. All right, guys, and the next thing you want to do is take an inch and a quarter socket. Uh, this fits absolutely perfect on this alternator. Um, <laughs> If I can remember where I got this socket, I'd tell you, but the outside diameter is absolutely just perfect. Uh, gosh, if I find out uh, where I got this thing, I will let you know. But as you can see, <clears throat> so you'll have to tap on it from the front side and it will remove out of the back. So this inch and a quarter socket is going to rest on the outside race, just barely where it protrudes from the case. And that way you're not destroying the bearing, even though we're going to replace it. But it's just very, uh, you know, it's just a better way to do things to tap on the outside race. And we'll go ahead and knock this out. Okay. Just like that. there's the bearing guys this looks actually like it's not a bad one it's an skf which skf makes really good bearings it is made overseas though Whoop, if i can show this um everything goes bad like i said of course it's not squealing now but when it was on the car it was squealing when it was cold so let's just go ahead and take care of stuff all right guys well here's the new kit uh to rebuild these 3g alternators um, what comes in the box is your bearings, the regulator, stator, all kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this box and lay everything out and show you what we're going to use. And there's the part number for the kit. And what comes in it is a new regulator. We're actually going to hold on to this because the regulator that's uh, on, that was on the alternator is still in really really good shape the carbon brushes are in very good shape so this is a new one we're just going to hold uh you know just keep this to the side front bearing rear bearing and also the pickup for your rotor you can tell the one on the rotor there's very little wear i mean it's in really good shape this new slip ring and this regulator we're going to hold off to the side i really needed the bearings but the whole kit was pretty much worth buying everything so uh, let's go ahead and put the rear bearing on and then this thing should go together pretty quickly. And this is a press fit, guys, this rear bearing. What you can do is tape, take a deep well 3.8 socket and rest it on the center race of the bearing and then just tap on it with a ball peen hammer and make sure it goes straight. And it'll pretty much do the job. You wanna lube the inside race first and you'll know on the shaft how far you need to go down from the wear marks but this will do it right here. And just tap the bearing in. Actually, it slid in with a nice snug fit, so I didn't have to tap it in. You guys may have to, just depending on the uh, race, but yeah, this one slid right in, um, and we're gonna go ahead and put the ring on. And there it is, the bearing retainer, dot to dot from punched before. So let's go ahead and put this rotor in. We're about to slide the stator onto the front end bell with the rotor in. My punch marks are lined up there and there. So be very careful guys when you uh, slide this together to not nick the wires or the windings. They're very delicate and they need to be insulated. So be very careful as you slide this together. All right, everything slid together very nicely. Everything lined up. Now you can run your three long bolts through just run them in evenly and that's what we're going to do now so what you'll notice on the regulator guys is these carbons pickups they are spring-loaded 
So if you'll notice, there's a hole on the side, and there's a hole right here in the case just above. So what you'll need to do to reinstall this is squeeze these, compress these in, and then what you're going to want to do is get a paper clip and slide through the hole in the case and make sure it goes through both of these carbon spring loads. And what it'll do is it'll keep these carbons, these pickups, in place while you install this. Once the regulator is installed, you can pull your paper clip out and the carbons will spring down onto the slip rings. So now with the paper clip installed, carbons in the up position, we'll slide this into the case and then we'll run the four screws down that hold it down. And after that, we'll pull the paper clip out and this thing will be ready to install in the car. All right, let's see what we got. There's one, two. There it is, rebuilt. Now we'll just put the pulley on and we'll go install it. And there it is, guys, fully rebuilt. So uh, anyways, we're just gonna go ahead and put this on and uh, should be good to go. nothing to it right um it's installed everything's running properly voltage is good so um hopefully this inspires some of you to rebuild your own alternators in lieu of uh, purchasing you know uh you know rebuilt or a brand new one um sometimes you just have to buy a new one or reman there's nothing wrong with that um but if you want to save a few bucks and learn how to do things yourself uh, this is kind of an easy project um one thing i will note if you want to upgrade the slip rings as mentioned earlier uh, you will need a soldering iron, but preferably like a butane torch, you know, something you can get at Home Depot just to heat the ends and solder uh, the two tips. Um, but I'm trying to think. That's pretty much it. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one.